respected chairpersons, I'm going to present a video on supine PCNL in infants, our experience. Treatment of renal stones in infants, especially doing PCNL, is very challenging. Recently, there is an increasing trend towards doing PCNL in supine position in adults. With vast experience of doing supine PCNL in adults as well as in children, we are showing three cases of supine PCNL in infantile age group. The first case is a nine-month-old male baby, 9 mm stone in the pelvis, right renal pelvis, and also 6 mm stone in the lower calyx. Initially, we have planned RIRS in this baby, but because of tight ureter and also contrast extravasation during RGP, we had to switch over to PCM. So we kept two bolsters, one in the shoulder girdle, other in the hip joint, and with 10 to 20 degree of tilt, we have marked the posterior axillary line, the 11th and 12th rib, and the iliac crest. The important thing is that the kidney is very close to the skin surface, so depth of the puncture will be very less. And we are seeing clear urine coming out. The guide wire is passed, which went into the ureter. The dilatation should be slow and gentle, with rotatory movements predominantly. Hand over the abdomen for counter pressure because of hypermobility of the kidney is helpful. Here we are using MIP excess call store system, 7.5 French scope and 11.5 French outer sheet is used. As this is a soft stone, we have used laser in this patient. The stone got fragmented easily. The thing with supine PCNL is because of the gravity aided direction of the puncture, all the stone fragments wash out without be any forces being used. All the fragments automatically come into the sheet without dispersing into the other calyces. The other thing is that we can easily reach the other calyces with a lower calyceal puncture. So in this patient, no nephrostomy is kept and strength is also not kept and the baby is discharged next day. The second patient is a one-year-old male baby with Multiple renal calculus, maximum of 10 mm in the pelvis, middle calyx, and lower calyx. Ultrasound can be useful in pediatric patients because to assess the depth of the puncture and the vicinity solid organs can be seen. In this patient, after RGP, lower calyceal puncture is aimed because the kidney is hypermobile, the needle can slip out easily. So, here, contrast extravasated. So after two atoms, again, after injecting thick contrast, we are able to make a lower calcium puncture. The guide wire is passed here, which coiled in the upper calyx and also went into the ureter. So the dilatation with the screw dilator has to be gentle. This kind of guide wire kinks can happen because of hypermobile kidneys and the lack of tensile strength in the tissues in infants. So in this patient also, we have used the call store MAP excess system. The 11.5 French sheet is placed and the scope is threaded, backloaded over the guide wire. The stone is seen and laser is being used for lithotripsy. It looks like a uric acid stone. All these stones were fragmented, and you can see that all the fragments, without usage of any forceps, easily came out through the outer sheet. So after that, all the calyces could be examined from the lower calyx, upper calyx, and all the calyces could be examined. And the guide wire is taken back, and the stent is railroaded over the guide wire here. No nephrostomy is placed. The stent is removed after two weeks. The third case is a matrix stone, multiple matrix stone in a one-year baby. He presented with multiple episodes of UTI. CT shows large chunks of matrix material. So this is the RGP picture. It's a large dilated system, dilated effaced calyces, and the dilated pelvis. So the puncture is directed towards the lower calyx. 
after two attempts we could make a successful puncture the depth of the puncture can be assessed with cm in the 30 degree cranial tilt the guide rod is placed as it is a matrix stone we have made a 22 french dilatation in this baby and you can see without any suction all these matrix material came to the amplat sheet automatically without any forces being used so the guide wire is removed and uh, the stent is back loaded and nephrostomy is kept our results in these three cases average operative time is around 30 minutes only mild hematuria is seen in two patients and uh, our stone success rate is 100% so to conclude supine pcnl is feasible in infants but large scale studies are required to ascertain its feasibility and safety thank you